Now at 5 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, a global IT outage wreaks havoc, impacting industries and infrastructure. How this happened this afternoon. Members of a Russian cyber criminal group have been sanctioned by the U.S. government over targeting U.S. water facilities, including some in North Texas. And a school in Marfa is now part of the U.S. National Park System. Well, the thunder showers are here and they're going to be here for the next seven days. So let's get ready for a very wet week ahead. Plus, Victoria has a surge in home listings this quarter. More options for buyers as prices hold steady. You're watching 25 News Now at 5. Good afternoon. Thanks for being with us. I'm Don Brubaker. Karina Garcia has the day off. Victoria police arrested a 34-year-old man today. Ernest Ramos of Victoria is charged with continuous violence against a family. He is in the Victoria County Jail in lieu of $50,000 bond. This morning, a funeral mass was held to honor a Harris County deputy last week. 28-year-old Fernando Esqueda was trailing a man accused of pistol whipping a pizza employee because they got the wrong order. The suspect, 44-year-old Ronnie Palmer reportedly fired a gun into Deputy Esqueda's car. The deputy died shortly after. Deputy Esqueda had been with the Harris County Sheriff's Office for five years. He was engaged to be married in September. Palmer and 26-year-old Dramon Francis have both been charged with capital murder. And now let's take a first look at your first warned steam, first warned storm team forecast. Chief Meteorologist Mac Pettis joined us now with a look what's going on outside. Mac is running around this uh, studio trying to find some rain. We had some this afternoon. Well, uh, unfortunately, it's, it's here and it's going to begin now. So we had the scattered uh, showers around the area today. You can see how it passed us right now. We're just on the overcast side, but this stuff is going to continue. And it's an accumulative thing. In other words, one inch today and one inch tomorrow and one inch the next day, that puts us at three inches. So we may have significant rainfall within the next five to seven days. We'll have more details on it coming up in just a moment. Back to you. Mike, thank you. Today, the Treasury Department sanctioned two members of a Russian cyber criminal gang that claimed responsibility for attacks on U.S. water facilities. The pair belongs to a politically motivated group called Cyber Army of Russian Reborn, or CAR. The gang claimed responsibility for multiple hacks against U.S. critical infrastructure providers. That includes one in January that caused a water facility tank in Mule shoe in North Texas to overflow. The breaches alarmed U.S. officials because of how easy they were to execute. The top U.N. court says that Israel's presence in the Palestinian occupied territories is unlawful and called on it to end for and ask for settlement construction to stop immediately. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu quickly denounced the non-binding opinion issued Friday by the 15-judge panel of the International Court of Justice. But the unprecedented and sweeping condemnation of Israel's rule over the lands it captured 57 years ago could increase the country's isolation. A major global technology outage is impacting banks, businesses, travel, and emergency services. The cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike, based in Austin, says the issue happened when it deployed a faulty update to computers running Microsoft Windows. But hours after the problem was first detected, the disarray continues. A massive IT outage wreaking havoc on industries and infrastructure after a faulty software update by CrowdStrike, an American cybersecurity firm whose services are utilized by thousands of businesses and government agencies across the globe. Travel taking the hardest hit, long lines forming at airports around the world, thousands of flights grounded, leaving passengers stranded. We're in Rome right now. I'm from Austin, Texas, and we were supposed to take off at 10.30 today on a Delta flight, 10.30 a.m. And uh, it kept getting delayed, delayed until noon, and then it's canceled. The outages impacting the nation's police and fire services. Law enforcement on alert for online actors and hackers attempting to infiltrate corporate and government IT networks by blasting bogus software fixes for the problem. Some experts defending CrowdStrike. It's the nature of the cat and mouse game with cybersecurity that you have to get new defensive technologies out very quickly. 
but others say this chaos was preventable. It's frankly shocking that in 2024, it's possible for an outage like this to occur. At least a dozen hospitals around the country also affected, some canceling elective surgeries. President Joe Biden briefed on the outage. The White House says his team is in touch with impacted organizations. Meanwhile, CrowdStrike scrambling to deploy a fix. The CEO apologizing for the chaos in a post on X and promising to get systems back online. And airlines are now beginning to slowly come back online, but it is expected to take some time before they're fully back up and running. Delays and cancellations expected through the morning and into the early afternoon. More than Norwood, ABC News, New York. Here's your viewer poll tonight. Scan that QR code on your screen to vote. Here's the question. Did the CrowdStrike global outage affect you? Yes or no? We want to hear your opinion. Come to CrossroadsToday.com slash vote to take part and we will have an update on 25 News Now at 6. More homes in Victoria are up for sale as compared to last year. The Texas Quarterly Housing Report shows active listings in Victoria have risen by 46 percent. That's compared to the second quarter of 2023. That gives home buyers more options. Home prices have remained strong. The median home price in Victoria stands at $239,900. That's a 4.2 percent increase from last year. The unemployment rate in Victoria rose all almost a full point in June. The Texas Workforce Commission reports the Victoria unemployment rate for June was 4.7 percent. In May, it was 3.8 percent. One year ago, the Victoria unemployment rate was 4.2 percent. The Texas unemployment rate is at 4 percent. Victoria ISD school board members met late into the evening Thursday to discuss several information items and to workshop the 2024-2025 budget. The board discussed devoting 85 percent of its budget to employee salaries. Currently between 74 and 76 percent of the district's budget is dedicated to salaries. Victoria ISD board president Mike Mercer said the newly proposed increase would leave a little over $10 million for what he said was some everything else. Starting July 22nd, Pleasant Green Drive will close between Juan Lynn Street and Port Lavaca Highway for four months for utility replacement and street reconstruction. All businesses and homes in the area will remain open and accessible. The closure is part of the Pleasant Green Drive reconstruction project. Blackwell School in the Valley is the newest site in the U.S. National Park System. The school in Marfa, built in 1909, was established for Mexican and Mexican-American students. By receiving the designation this week, Blackwell School has permanent protection. The site has the original 1909 Adobe Schoolhouse and a smaller 1927 classroom building known as the Band Hall. The buildings hold photographs, memorabilia, and panels that display quotes and stories from students and teachers. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. Then you can see Crossroads Today on YouTube. And stay with us straight ahead on 25 News Now at 5. Donald Trump accepts his third GOP presidential nomination, detailing a near-death experience and sharing a new message of unity. Also ahead, experts advise scheduling a doctor visit for vaccinations to protect your children before school starts. during a reporting trip for the Wall Street Journal. He was later accused of spying for the CIA. The U.S. State Department designated him as wrongfully detained and called for his immediate release. Now that his sentence is official, the Biden administration says it is pushing even harder for the American reporter's release. A different kind of speech from former President Donald Trump, a speech he said he rewrote after surviving an assassination attempt just days ago. Former President Donald Trump addressing the crowd on the final day of the Republican National Convention, accepting his third GOP presidential nomination. I am running to be president for all of America, not half of America. Just days after surviving an assassination attempt at a Pennsylvania rally, he detailed that near-death experience. I started to, like this, turn to my right, 
and was ready to begin a little bit further turn, which I'm very lucky I didn't do. Sources say he's been intensely focused on this speech in recent days, personally dictating and writing portions of the address. Trump told those close to him he wanted to strike a more unifying tone. Despite such a heinous attack, we unite this evening more determined than ever. He only mentioned President Joe Biden's name once. Only going to use the term once. Biden. A marked departure from his two previous convention speeches. And for the most part, he focused on the core themes guiding his campaign, including inflation, the economy, crime, and immigration, ending the night on a more familiar tone. But we become a dumping ground for the rest of the world, which is laughing at us. They think we're stupid. Trump and his running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, will hold their first joint rally this weekend at an indoor venue in Michigan. Reporting in Milwaukee, I'm Julia Benbrook. A Manhattan judge set a tentative trial date for Harvey Weinstein to be retried on sex crime charges this fall. They will aim to start jury selection on November 12th. Weinstein was convicted in 2020 of first-degree criminal sexual act and a third-degree rape and sentenced to 23 years in prison. But the New York Court of Appeals overturned the conviction. <coughs> The disgraced movie mogul has remained behind bars because he was also sentenced to 16 years on charges of rape and sexual assault. Experts say now is the time to start preparing students for back to school, and that includes protecting children from preventable diseases. Summer fun in the sun isn't yet done, but soon empty classrooms will be filled, and experts say now is the time to start thinking about protecting students. Making sure that kids have a back to school visit with their family physician is important. Dr. Jen Brule with the American Academy of Family Physicians says that late summer doctor visit can help make sure children are up to date on immunizations. Vaccines all work differently, but help the body's immune system learn to fight germs. And it can take weeks for that protection to develop. When school age kids get their vaccinations on time and before they go to school, they're less likely to catch things at school. One of the latest concerns, measles. In March, the CDC issued an alert over rising cases in the U.S. In the latest data, as of last week, a total of 167 measles cases were reported in 24 states this year alone. It is frightening, and we want to make sure that families, and particularly families who have children, know that those illnesses are preventable with vaccines that are available in your family physician's office every day. Which vaccinations a child should be getting will vary based on age, but Brule says to also start thinking about protecting against flu and COVID-19. I think it's important for everyone to know that vaccines are incredibly safe. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Texas Christian-influenced curriculum spurs worries about bullying and church-state separation. Some secular groups and members of other faiths say the curriculum could give schools too much control over how children are taught religion. You can read this Texas Tribune article on our website, crossroadstoday.com. Good afternoon, everyone. We got a lot of uh, cloud cover in the area today. We did have a few little showers, but nothing significant in terms of, you know, big downpours. We're at 89 degrees right about now, and our high was affected by the clouds only 89 because we're supposed to be about 95. It's okay. I don't want to go there either. The problem is that we're going to get some wonderful rain over and over and over and over again. So a little bit uh, too much of a good thing can be a problem. And we're going to be talking about that coming up in just a moment. Well, good afternoon. Uh, lots of cloud cover out there, but not a lot of rain. I mean, we did get some. You can see it coming down. It started up uh, in central Texas, then started dropping down and through our area. Uh, there's Victoria. You can see the shower activity passing through. At this hour, most of the stuff, uh, the heavier activity, is uh, down near Furio, where they're getting the heavier rain. Here's our little frontal system. It's, uh, I, you know, I hate to call it a frontal system because it's not really huge, but it is a different air mass up here. It's drier. 
and maybe five, 10 degrees cooler uh, than what we have over here, the very humid air mass above. But this is now the focusing mechanism for a couple of days of afternoon showers, and then it gets even more complicated, all right? This uh, front was part of the big cooling down that happened for the Midwest. They were having a heat wave, remember? Well, this came down and gave them a nice little break, even as far south as Atlanta. And now you can see, well, this perfect example right here. The winds are going this way, okay? And so the winds are pushing this complex of storms down into the Midwest. We're gonna be affected by that as the high pressure has now moved to the Western states and that, uh, well, I'll have more on that coming up. Now here is Doppler radar, here's Victoria. You can see how the activity went through became widely scattered and then the last stuff we have is way down there even south of Refugio down toward uh, the uh, port uh, Portland and the Rockport area uh, to the south. This is the rainfall that we actually got so you know the city kind of missed it again but a little bit heavier stuff uh, not far from Hallettsville and Quero all the way down they got a little bit heavier stuff as well. But this is only the beginning. I keep saying it's a, a, a little bit of a good thing over and over and over and over and over again. Well, I guess to be a problem, and that's kind of the situation we're looking at. The dome has moved back east. Everybody, uh, back west rather. Uh, back west, this is going to be brutal heat wave, but the winds are flowing in this direction. This is a... Um, uh, anti-cyclone, okay, it goes like this, so it's a clockwise weather pattern, flow, and that's going to bring uh, disturbances out of here and then down like this and down into our area and then eventually they roll around. I mean, theoretically they could. Well, that puts us in a situation where we've got loose um, atmosphere, uh, an unstable atmosphere. We have the possibility of, uh, with a little bit of heating, getting daily afternoon thunder showers. And then by the time we get to about uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, we've got another influence up here that will make this get even worse. So, you know, by and large, I like to see rain. You like to see rain. Everybody likes to see rain, but not for seven days in a row. Right about now, as you can see right about here, we've got expanded rainfall through Saturday, okay? But then, then you've got to multiply on top of that a second row or line of showers, and then a third, and then a fourth. And I'll tell you, the biggest concern we have right now, I, I do, of uh, my corn farmers are trying to pick up all their corn out of the field. Thing is, next week's going to be a rotten week. Uh, too much rain, too many... Too much rain it, it can happen, and uh, the thing is, the timing of the harvest is real big problem. So, uh, isolated showers for Saturday. If you got to get something done, I'd get it done either Saturday or Sunday, because beyond that, it gets kind of messy around here. As a matter of fact, you can see right here in your seven day forecast how the rain ramps up on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. That's a lot of rain coming down in one place. <coughs> Pardon me. That is your seven day forecast. Reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that. Put Crossroads today on your phone and we'll toss it back to Don. Mac, thank you. And coming up next on 25 News Now at 5, we'll take a look at your stocks. Plus, summer heat is impacting travel plans and gas prices with slight relief at the pump. On Thursday, AAA reported the national average for a gallon of regular unleaded is $3.50. That's down four cents from last week. That may be because many drivers are avoiding road travel due to the recent scorching heat. Average gas prices are currently above $4 in three states, all located on the West Coast. California has the most expensive gas in the U.S. at $4.71 a gallon. Hyundai is recalling about 67,000 vehicles in two separate recalls. The first includes 54,000 recent Genesis, Elantra, Kona, and Veloster models. They have fuel pumps that could fail and cause the vehicle to stop moving. The second is for more than 12,000 2024 Santa Fe's. A software error in their transmissions could cause the vehicle to roll away when it is in park. Affected owners of both recalls will be notified by September 9th for free fixes. Stay with us. We'll take one last look at your forecast. Plus, San Diego's newest Panda Pair makes their public debut next month. And now here's a look at what's coming on World News Tonight right after 
25 News Now at 5. Tonight, the pressure building on President Biden. Plus, did the RNC messaging change any minds? In this race for the White House, more Americans turn to World News Tonight with David Muir, the most watched newscast on television. Uh, San Diego's newest panda pair <laughs> is set to make their public debut next month. The San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance released its first official pictures of Yun Chuan and Qin Bao in their new habitat. The pair arrived from China earlier this summer. They were sent to the U.S. as a sign of friendship and are the first giant pandas to enter the country in two decades. Starting August 1st, guests can visit those two giant pandas' habitat with a special timed ticket or by joining the standby line. <laughs> Would you like to be in that standby line to see the pandas? Well, I'll tell you, if I was there, yeah, I, I'd, I'd stand by to see that. That's just an amazing, uh, you know, you're thinking, what was the good Lord thinking when he painted them like this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, he did such a good job. I'm going, he did, make didn't their he? ears black and <laughs> make their big eyes like that. <laughs> It's pretty amazing. And no other animal like that on this planet. N not like that, but then, yeah. you know, I used to get, I used to snorkel a lot and then mm -hmm. go see the, the saltwater fish. Uh -huh. And the colors, you go, how did they do I know, that? I know. Well, it's just the wonders of nature. Anyway. Quite amazing. Yep, quite amazing. Well, what amazing is going to be for us because we're going to have a little bit of a good thing for several too many days. In fact, uh, showers again tomorrow and then Sunday and then getting real heavy on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And by the time we get to mid week of next week, we're going to be looking for potential flooding problems. Uh, it's a thing we've got to just get ready for and just I'm giving you as much uh, heads up and fair warning as I can. So if people want to do their yard tomorrow, <coughs> do it in the morning? If you can do it in the morning tomorrow, it would be good because Sunday is probably less and Monday is probably not a good shot. All right, Mac, thank you and thanks for being with us. We'll see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 6. World News Tonight with David Muir is up next.